Hello, my name is Frank Saratella. For those of you who are new to the channel, I am a miracle. I'm supposed to be dead. In 2012, they closed the expressways in Chicago to pull me out of my truck and rush me to a trauma center. In 1984 is when Jesus changed my life. If you'd like to read more about my testimony, you can click on the link below, amidnightcry.com. You'll find it on my website, along with books that I have published on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And uh, there's also study tools there that will help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. For those of you who are returning, I want to thank you for your support. Uh, this is an impromptu video, and lately the Lord has been doing this with me. Uh, he'll give me something in the morning and then have me do a video later that day. Today is no different. This morning, a young lady came to me and said that the Lord had woke her up when she got up in the morning. The Lord spoke to her and said that Noah was in the ark seven days before the flood. And I thought that was really interesting because I was always under the assumption that Noah entered the ark after the seven days. But if we go to Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Verse 4, For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy it, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all the things that I have made. I'd never seen that before with as many times as I had read God's Word. And I thought, well, that's pretty interesting. And I thought, okay, well, how does that relate to today? Very much so. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why the Lord continues to put an urgency in the spirit, in the air, in people's hearts. People know, and this is the sad part. People know Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. You're right, He is. But He's not coming the way you think. He's coming in vengeance. He comes twice. He comes in vengeance. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses, I believe it's 7 and 8. And then He returns for the bride at the very end. So now, what is God doing? He's preparing us. He's preparing us for when He unleashes His judgment and Jesus returns in vengeance. That's Revelation chapter 19. When Jesus, with His sword on His horse, treads the winepress of God's wrath. And that sword is actually referenced in Ezekiel chapter 21. And you'll see all through the Old Testament in the prophets where God talks about bringing the sword, slaying the people. And it's always against His people. So God is reaching out for us to get prepared. And in the preparation, we have to see our hearts and we have to allow the Lord to show us our hearts the way He sees them, not be discouraged, repent with no regrets, and rejoice in Him. You know, I, I've, I've shared this before and I'll share it again. The, the Lord recently has put me in some very trying circumstances. And I'm just being very candid with you guys. The last couple of days have not been easy. Not at all. And in it, I'm seeing the selfishness, the self-pity, the murmuring and complaining, just like the children of Israel. Well, the Word of God says we are to, to rejoice evermore. That means in good, bad, and ugly. And it also says in Deuteronomy, I think it's in chapter 28, that if we do not have joy in all things, God will bring a curse against us. Okay? This is why I encourage you to get before the Lord and ask Him to show you your heart. In the recent developments that have happened in my life, and I share this only so that I can comfort you, as Paul tells us to comfort each other in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, so that you understand what's coming, because if we're not growing, ladies and gentlemen, in Jesus, we are retarded. If you're not growing, you're staying stagnant. That means you become complacent. Complacent people do not go to heaven, by the way. God needs to grow. He needs us to grow, and He needs us to stretch us and bring us out of places we've never been before. 
He needs to show us our hearts like we've never seen before. And in these few days, I'm seeing things I've never saw before. And when this all began back in October, I was really, I was angry at God. And I was yelling and screaming. And I said, you know, this is not something that I signed up for. And I was really just, I was very upset. And after I got done with my temper tantrum, the Lord spoke very clearly to me and he said, I thought you wanted to go all the way with me. And I said, I do, Lord. And then the Lord said, there's no boundaries. And that's when it dawned on me. Ladies and gentlemen, living here in America, we have put God in a box. Christianity has become comfortable. Christianity has become complacent. Christianity has become convenient. All characteristics that are not in God's Word. Paul was nothing. Paul was not complacent. Paul was never comfortable. Paul was never compromising. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to allow God to start stretching you. In this time of stretching, the Lord had me see a video. It's on <clears throat> the Navy SEALs and what young men do to become a Navy SEAL. And I'm going to put the link in the bottom of the, of the video so that you can watch it. Um, I've actually got some notes on it, which I'm going to share with you in a minute. And I'm going to tell you why I'm sharing it. It's because in these few days that have been very distressful for me, God's bringing me to a place I've never been before. And what he's showing me is how we need to stop looking at circumstances. We have to stop looking at how we feel and keep our eyes on Jesus. When did Peter sink? When Peter was walking on water, when did Peter sink? When did Peter sink is when he took his eyes off of the Word of God, Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, the circumstances we're going to go into... And we're going into persecution, ladies and gentlemen. Don't think for one minute we're going to avoid it. We're going to go through it. And how are you going to get through the whippings, the beatings, the persecutions that are going to come? What we have to do is we need to set our mind on things above and not below. We have to learn to take captive every thought to the obedience of Jesus and set our mind on the Word of God. That's why it says in Joshua 1.8, that if we meditate on the Word of God day and night, we will have good success. And that's why it says in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can we renew our mind and have a new mind like the mind of Christ if we're not meditating on His Word? Now let me explain to you how this is going to work. Let me read to you the quotation that I read uh, that I wrote down from the narrator in the Navy SEALs video. Navy SEALs believe when a man is pushed far enough, he will either do one of two things. He will quit or retreat into the inner safety of his mind where he can function oblivious to the pain in his body. If he cannot divorce himself from the pain and separate mind and body, he will not survive Hell Week. The consciousness of self is the greatest hindrance in overcoming. Ladies and gentlemen, in our time of distress, in our time of affliction, this is when we need to meditate, we need to retreat into the inner, sanct into the inner sanctuary of our mind and meditate on the Word of God. As, as I've been going through this and started yesterday, maybe the day before, I've been meditating on Psalms 18.1. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. We need to make Jesus our strength. We need to learn how to make Jesus our refuge. And that is the Word of God. The Word of God is going to be our refuge in all this, ladies and gentlemen. So what does this have to do with Noah? God put Noah in the ark seven days before the flood so that Noah could get used to being in the ark. He never took care of animals before. He didn't do any of this. So God gave him a space to get comfortable being in un familiar circumstances. And then remember, when Noah was in the ark and the Lord shut the door on Noah, 
Noah had no idea what was going on around him. He was safe and he was protected. Completely oblivious to everything around him. God sparing him. Oh, he may have heard the poundings, he may have even heard the screams, but he had no concept of what was going on in the flood and the rain and the, and, and the water. He had no idea. Ladies and gentlemen, we are supposed to be so in love with Jesus, our eyes so fixed on the, the author and the finish of our faith, our eyes so in focus on the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Lamb of God, who's taken our sins away, that we are completely oblivious to Him and love only Him and drain and empty ourselves of all selfishness and self-righteousness and anything that has to do with self-gratification and learn to lay down our life for Jesus as Jesus laid down His life for us. The bride is going to be the people who have learned to lay down their life, give up their life, die to self, deny themselves and take up their cross and allow God to be their God. This is a call, ladies and gentlemen. If you're in a church, get out of your church. Your church is your safety net. Get out of it. If you're in a ministry, get out of your ministry. Now is the time God is not making reputations. God is making disciples of Jesus. He's learning. He's teaching us how to learn how to follow Jesus according to the Word of God, not according to biblical traditions, seminary, and theology. That is not in God's, God's mindset. That is not in God's Word. God is doing something new. And something new is following Jesus wherever He shall go. I'm asking you and I'm begging you in the name of Jesus, get on your heart, get on your face before God, ask the Lord to search your heart, show you the secret sins in your heart, the idols in your heart, get humble before God and get broken and learn. And ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, I'm in the same boat as you are. Nobody's exempt here. I'm learning how to depend on Jesus for everything. Learning to depend on Jesus for all of my decisions, for everything. If we don't, we're not going to make it. The vengeance that God is going to bring upon the religious system and America is going to be unprecedented. And it's been recent that in the last week, the Lord continues to reveal in His Word the vengeance that's going to be unleashed on us. And the thing that's really opened my eyes is He is not just releasing His vengeance on America. He's releasing His vengeance on the whole Christian community that's number one, that's first and foremost, because judgment begins in the house of God. And then it's on the world. And America's part of the world. America will get more because we know more. Where much is given, much is required. We print 100 million Bibles a year. Therefore, our accountability to God is more. Therefore, we're going to get much greater judgment. So that being said, I'm just asking you and I'm begging you to get before the Lord and ask the Lord to show you the secret sins in your heart. Ask the Lord to show you the idols in your heart. Ask the Lord three things to teach you how to love Him the way He asks you to love Him, to obey Him the way He asks you to obey Him, and to know Him. Because eternal life, John 17, 3, is knowing Jesus. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, your Son. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this video. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to prepare, get into the ark, love Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Learn to love everybody the way He does. Because how can we say we love God who we don't see if we can't love our neighbor who we do see? It's impossible to love Jesus too much, but you will die and go to hell for loving Him too little. Thank you.